Good afternoon. It's two o'clock, a little after two o'clock Hawaiian time. And thank you for those who are faithfully showing up every day to listen to my blub. I hope everyone who wanted to make it was able to. Today I have, yesterday I promised you that today I will be talking um, about um, the alchemy that Jesus represents in my life. But before we would go there, I would just like to review a little bit about what we have spoken of this week. Um, mostly, what is most important and stands out in my memory is to have a virtual reality experience and an actual reality experience in our entrepreneurial path as Bible-following Christians. And we have heard a few thoughts about um, how the, the crackling and the sound of the fire um, can be, and the visuals of the fire by the fireplace can be replicated virtually, but the actual warmth, the smell, the um, ambience of the fire is a lot harder and in fact virtually impossible to communicate from space to space. And this is exactly what happens when we practice entrepreneurship, which is service to others without God, who is the inventor of service to others. So if you take your faith at all seriously, then you would like to sacrifice the virtual reality of doing business without the companionship of the Bible and of God. It is putting back into entrepreneurship, the reality of service to others by him who actually created others who created service. Secondly, we have been also getting more familiar with, uh, um, with a biblical passage on Zacchaeus and his story. Most importantly was the service recovery speech that um, we have analytically looked at yesterday. When we look back on the past year of 2015 and we do an honest review and evaluation of our year, we most certainly become aware of the people who have been had a bad experience with our services. And that evaluation is absolutely essential in order for us to grow based on the stories of those individuals, learning the lessons of the year, be pausing and um, soaking in, is there anything I could do differently? Is there anything I could make amends about and repair and heal the bad experiences, raise them to a higher level and please God and glorify God with the efforts that I put into my business and service to others. So Zacchaeus was one of our examples, um, his transformation and his not hesitant um, action taking attitude while we have been observing the, his relationship with the crowd and Jesus, we also discovered the, the, the initial elements of alchemy. And here we got to today's subject. Again, I would like to reinforce that I am not teaching witchcraft, not, uh, not even uh, any kind of altruistic arts of magic. This is not about looking at the dark sides of science. 
alchemy is basically present in every relationship. And what I mean by that is alchemy originally means to take a prima material that has um, that is not very valuable, a lesser, va a lesser value, and combining it with other elements, um, also a part of your own heart and your own spirit, your words, and raising it to a higher value. It is making it better. For example, in business, if you have ingredients all over the country, you become an entrepreneur, really, just by gathering those ingredients into your own kitchen, into your own hands, and putting them together, combining the various elements and creating a whole. If it was to be a model airplane, then um, all, the, all the parts could be coming from all over the world and you combine those elements and you make a model airplane, you can put it back online and sell it. Or maybe it will be an, a medical service for which you order medicines from all over the world and you bring it into your office, service to others right there locally. You have made your office a higher level, a higher value. And all of those uh, medical supplies that you have ordered in the mail, they were worthless before because they were just sitting in somebody's closet or somewhere in a warehouse. But when you have got them gathered in your office, you have become um, an alchemist because you have given a higher value to those elements. You have um, given them purpose and they, you allow them to serve their purpose both entrepreneurship and alchemy at the same time. And that is the, the essential message I would like to get across to you today is to, for Jesus to, to call Jesus as my alchemist to me simply means that he took my wretched soul, my heart, my sins into his hand and covers it with his blood, his grace. This has the potential to make a better quality heart, a higher calling for my purpose. He takes a lesser value and through his word of the Bible, he transforms my heart into a higher value, something that has already been precious, but it will be infinitely more precious because of his influence. Now, if you look up um, alchemist in the dictionary, you will find the definition in the science of alchemy, of change, transforming a lesser value into a higher value. Not that stroke me because well-versed has inevitably rung for me that Jesus is the embodiment of the universal word, the creative word he is the logos in flesh or he was when he was on earth
and he looks like my recording is a bit spotty today and i apologize for that i'm uh, i'm sorry that we have lost connection for a minute but i am capable of picking it up where i had been just a minute ago um therefore if jesus is the word and his person is well versed in the transformation of turning a lesser value into a higher value and here the primal material is my heart and soul then technically linguistically jesus is also an alchemist and this is the point i would have liked to make today however short this blob has been because i have the feeling that i have lost the recording previously but uh, what i can promise is that if that this is going to be repeated every day at two o'clock in the afternoon i am on blob i can be found here and make sure that you sign up as a follower to my blog because i can send you a, a notification every time i am available here um many new people are just popping in that is incredibly encouraging and because i have just lost 50 minutes of recording since two o'clock, I feel encouraged. Oh, could I give a quick recap? Yes, Rob, I am just considering to repeat the entire thing because people, nobody has actually been here from the very beginning and they are just seem to be popping in. And I have lost 15 minutes of recording due to a spotty internet connection. I will be more than happy to repeat my presentation. So this is, um, this week we have had two major subjects covered. One of them, the first one was about the virtual reality and the actual reality of biblical entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. And the second one was in the review of the year and learning our lessons, pausing before we um, get started with the, the new year. Um, entrepreneurship and virtual entrepreneurship. I have brought up the metaphor of a fireside experience. There is a huge difference between watching a crackling fireplace on our YouTube channel in Zulog, nicely um, with music in the background, and and a fireplace that actually reality in reality in the same room you are with. The virtual reality of the fireplace can be described as there is visuals, there is audio, but it cannot replicate the smell of the fireplace, the ambience, and certainly cannot give you back the warmth that the fireplace is projecting. It has an additional soul to it that we cannot virtually convey now this is exactly the difference i feel is between entrepreneurship and biblical entrepreneurship entrepreneurship would be the one that actually does not consider god as being the central soul of service entrepreneurship is actually a service to others whether if it is for compensation or as a goodwill offering or it is a church planting um, effort it is always a service to others seeking out a need and creatively coming up with a solution making it available 
while biblical entrepreneurship is basically putting God, the author of service to others, the creator of others, and the provider, the ultimate provider of all solutions back into business. When you decide that you, entrepreneurship isn't satisfactory for you entirely, and we will talk about the human needs um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the future, all the needs that service to others can meet in entrepreneurs, what service to others is actually as a nurturing quality of our own lives. But um, biblical entrepreneurship, by using the word of God, the presence of God, the lessons, and actually just the, pre the energy of God being present uh, in your service to others is like putting the warmth and the smell of the fire, like putting real service to others into the room with you, like being next to an actual fireplace as opposed to watching a virtual fireplace through the screen. That was the first blob message. The second one was about looking back to the year of 2015 and evaluating how good of a service we have done to others. There is praise reports. There is things that were going to increase our confidence and that going to validate our services. But there also will be thoughts and um, and we will recall experiences where our customers had a bad experience. They did not enjoy to be served by our services, which is why um, we studied the Bible passage of the story of Zacchaeus, the tax collector of Jericho, who climbed up on the tree to able to see Jesus. And this very same man, through repentance and making amends, without hesitation, have been eligible and qualified for the Abrahamic blessings. And it has been given to him right there immediately by Jesus. If you would like to hear um, my lecture on that one, you would have to see yesterday's blub. And um, I will be posting all the blubs on my website and also um, on Facebook. So if you join me on Facebook, and follow me there also, you will be able to revisit my previous presentations. But Zacchaeus's story is archetypally the service recovery speech, the ultimate service recovery speech, something that we as service to others entrepreneurs would have to take very seriously at heart because without an honest, revisiting of how satisfied our customers are, what means we are um, acquiring our um, livelihood does matter. And it can become a new opportunity for further relationship building. It is, could become a, a springboard for more marketing platforms because of the way we handle our service recovery procedures and, and speeches. So that was yesterday. And for today, I have promised to talk about the subject of the alchemy of um, Jesus and my 
own personal soul. Um, the way we have come to this point was is that Zacchaeus had made an immediate turnaround and there was a dynamic between the crowd and Jesus and Zacchaeus that was unique to the service recovery. And it was an incredibly powerful, life-transforming, alchemical explosion, basically, what happened, because it transformed everybody's life. It transformed the life of those who were onlooking on them. Uh, it transformed Zacchaeus's life. And Jesus had rejoiced and stayed at his house for overnight um, until he had to move on the next day. So when I talk about alchemy, I would like to point it out. I keep away from anything that even resembles witchcraft. I do not get involved in altruistic arts of magic, and I am not interested to evaluate the dark sides of science. When I talk about alchemy, um, ultimately what it is, is a chemistry taking place between individuals for relationship building and personal transformation. This alchemy, this conclusion I have come to about alchemy between me and Jesus is based on uh, my research of uh, finding out about the um, finding out about the definition of um, alchemy and the definition of alchemist. Um, when um, you look it up in the dictionary, alchemy is basically taking a lesser value and transforming it, transforming it into a higher value. And the alchemist is the person who is well-versed in the science of transforming a lesser value into a higher value. This is every single time happens by either drawing in different elements for the alchemical process, but Ultimately, it is always based on the person and the personality of the alchemist, something that only this person can add to the process, which makes this chemical pro chemistry of, of um, participants into a process of alchemy. Now, um, the lesser value, if I look at my heart as the lesser value, well, let's actually start with an example that is a lot um, simpler. If somebody is into motor airplane modeling and the elements are all over the world, the particle part, parts that he needs to bring in, those parts in themselves, somewhere in New Zealand or somewhere in Southern Monaco, are totally worthless. But when the person who in our um, example is the alchemist draws in those elements and puts them together and makes a model airplane of um, some unique um, tree wood that he can bend scientifically just exactly the way it's supposed to and it is lightweight and it is resilient of weather then he actually, by those exact choices, putting together the airplane, he become he raised the lesser value into a significantly higher value through his own skills and his own vision of having been able to visualize that airplane before he even began to order the parts. And there was another example I have um, brought up earlier that can make it um, easier to understand. I simply forgot what that was, but let's see. Somebody has a note here for me. Robimond, CJ. Let's take a bakery as an example. What's the difference between a normal bakery and a biblical bakery? 
Beautiful question. The difference between an entrepreneurial adventure as a bakery and of an entrepreneurial venture of a bakery with the Bible together is simply the alchemist, the baker. He, um, let's see, there is the service recovery from yesterday. We could bring it in. Zacho is the constant repentance, but it is always the alchemist and his spiritual orientation, his relationship with Jesus that is going to turn it into a biblical bakery or not a biblical bakery. It's not, I wouldn't even say biblical bakery, but a, a biblical entrepreneurship um, path. Um, a biblical entrepreneur is someone who is service to others. Um, wow, how did I say that yesterday? That it was a lot simpler. Um, Yes, um, oh wow, she's actually noticed what's going on. Um, alchemist, oh hey, acknowledgement. Um, the it is read out of sync for me as well. Is she? I can't actually see the recording sign, and for me. Her audio and video are out of sync. She is recording though. Yeah, well, it is pretty clear in my um, view that I, any of the blood presentations I have seen so far has been presentations. If you would like to interact with me and be invited as a guest, I will be more than happy to give you a link where you can apply for a future date. Yes, this is where you guys are uh, welcome to apply to be a guest on this blob recording. Um, any other subject related questions? Uh, Reedan, um, I have repeated my talk twice and I have been pretty much right to the point. If you have still no idea what I'm talking about, that probably has got to do with uh, your attention. Yeah, I hate to be rude, but if I'm only getting rude comments in the box, I am not necessarily going, I'm going to ignore them from now on. Oh, you have come in late. Okay, um, Reid, um, what I can uh, offer you is that because I repeated my presentation today, for today twice, is that I'm going to pause the recording right